Agrarian Revolution United Kingdom. Hodi, karibu. Oh, hello, Ben Anderson. How did you find your way around? Don't worry, famous. I can find my way around just anywhere in this village. Okay, take a seat while I make you some tea. Unfortunately, my parents left earlier for town, so you won't be able to meet them today. It's all right, Luanda. I think this is a blessing in disguise since no one is going to distract us when we talk. Fine. So, what are we going to talk about today? Mm, you tell me. Mm. Oh, Chelsea versus Tottenham game? Not quite, but England is close. Oh. Well, yesterday we left our discussion at the point where agricultural ideas in Mesopotamia spread to Europe. Is that so? Great memory. Those new ideas brought radical changes in the livestock and crop farming techniques in Europe. We shall call it the Agrarian Revolution. It all began in Britain, although this is about seven thousand years after where we left off yesterday. Wow, this is quite a jump. But I won't question the case, Yesi. I long to go to London one day. Hope, my little friend, is the last thing I want to take away from you. Your dream is valid. Now that aside, before the Agrarian Revolution, agriculture in Europe was mainly for subsistence. Land was not fenced, and seeds were planted by broadcast method, which was just throwing seeds at the ground. So they were not very different from us. Ah,、uh, I guess so. But in their case, land was owned by the king, who leased it to the peasants with the help of noblemen called lords of the manor. It's feudalism. Have you ever heard of it?、Mm, briefly, about a king and his subjects, knights and、uh, Robin Hood. That is so weird, anyway. So, since land was not fenced, it was difficult to control livestock, I suppose. Exactly, and that made livestock keeping and selective breeding very hard. This, coupled with livestock being everywhere, diseases spread really fast. The open field system wasted a lot of land, as it was a requirement that some portions had to lie fallow or unused. Since the system was so unorganized, it wasted time getting two farms, and people could easily just trample through your farmland. And I guess this led to the Agrarian Revolution. Smart boy, the Agrarian Revolution. As I mentioned, it all began in Britain and got into full swing between 1750. And 1850, agriculture witnessed tremendous transformation from a simple kind to a more complex industry. Oh yeah, like the evolution of man. And that would be the perfect analogy. Now, if you don't mind, I'll take some more chai and I'll tell you how it all happened. Right away, boss. Room service here. Now talk. Asante. All right. Since settlements were beginning to grow very rapidly, the food stock had to keep up, and so the farmers had to get smarter. What do I always say? Necessity is the mother of all invention. Yes, yes. Keep going. Yes. Now they started cultivating fallow lands and even reclaimed marshlands to create more arable lands. That is usable land. You should talk to my friend Sam if you want to know more on methods to do that. To ensure all the land was cultivated, new inventions were made, such as the seed drill, horse plow, and a thresher, which accelerated crop production on a large scale. Oh,、uh, I guess there is some more. Judging by the way you're looking at me. Mm-hmm. So listen. Since the revolution was both in field of farming. And industry, better farming techniques were discovered, like crop rotation, the use of fertilizers to improve the soil fertility, and new improved cattle breeds through selective breeding. And I guess they started fencing their fields. Very true. In fact, the government enacted a legislation that is laws in 1750. Which now forced farmers to fence all their fields, making pest and disease control a lot easier. The certain portions of land were consolidated to allow for large-scale farming. So these are large changes. 
what are the small things came to be? Like, how do you keep food safe for a long time? Farmers were now able to preserve perishable foods courtesy of canning. Refrigeration came in the later years thanks to the Industrial Revolution, which was pretty much a huge change in how factories worked and were built. Now, onto your favorite topic. How did this revolution impact the lives of the British? Me again? Mind if you go first, at least for a change. I do not mind, but I get the easy ones then. Obviously, better and more food was available, which leads to more babies being born and actually surviving. This was a new and improved standard of living since agriculture gave farmers a viable business and income. A new class of landowners who became very rich off the work of others was now an option. All right, you are up to bat. But what? I forgot. No baseball here. Anyways, keep going. Right. Well, if there was a wealthy class being made, that means somehow a poorer class was made too. Balance, right? Yep. So these peasants were now unemployed with no land to work and caused them to move to the new urban centers. Hot damn. And this gave a rise in crime. And I know that Britain sent criminals to Australia, so there must have been a migration to far lands as well. And? Not done. Since the urban centers were being populated with the workforce and raw material from farming, industrialization popped off. And this led to society of farmers to meet and discuss their ideas. How is that? I am so impressed. You will be quite the posh young man in London soon. But what about going to New York City? Yuck. Americans are so fat. Watch it. But do you want to know how we became so fat? Mm, I suppose. Hmm. And speaking of fat and food, I am kind of hungry. Shall we start walking to the market? Yes, and uh, you can tell me the story on the way. Perfect. Let's go.